motherhood in its literal form. Motherhood is a metaphor. It's not a hot take. It's not a fresh theme. Hi guys. It's a pretty rainy day here today. Rain outside means big hair. Extra big hair today, but that's okay. I feel like this video gives off big hair energy. Today we are here to discuss books about mothering, motherhood, mothers, books that grapple with motherhood in a creative way. Motherhood is literally the oldest theme of literature ever. Thank you, Mary. The figure of the mother has been around as long as or longer than literature has existed. However, there are some authors who are doing interesting creative things around this theme. So my goal today is to discuss books that approach motherhood and mothering in a different and novel way. Of course, there are a million books about mothering, a million books in which motherhood exists or is a major theme. Whittling this video down was so hard. Honestly, I pretty much psyched myself out on this video. First of all, I was like, well, I need to read everything that could possibly fit into this video, and that's insane. I will never be able to do that. This is going to include books in which motherhood is a major theme, books that I genuinely love and recommend even if you're not interested in that theme, books that are approaching that theme in an interesting and new way that is not your typical story of mothering. I also want to say that motherhood takes many forms. A lot of these books grapple with the relationship between mothering and writing. A lot of the protagonists in the fiction on this list or the authors obviously of the nonfiction are coming from the perspective of the writer and the relationship between being mother and being writer. And if it is possible to be both, if it is possible to be one without the other. I think this is also like a really interesting question in conversation. Throughout time, there have famously been authors who rejected motherhood. Virginia Woolf comes to mind. This idea that it is impossible to be a writer and care for living things and be the person responsible for the livelihood of others and to also have the mental capacity to write. Obviously, this is not something I necessarily subscribe to. Uh, I can think of many amazing mother authors, but this is sort of a thing floating in the ethos. And then interestingly, there's also this concept that you cannot fully reach your potential as a writer without being a mother, there's an amazing interview, I will link it downstairs, in which Sheila Hetty interviews Elena Ferrante, two of my faves. Hetty asks, if you are a woman who does not pursue motherhood, you miss out on the highest degree of your humanity. Can you ever really write without being a mother because you don't experience the fullness of humanity and therefore you can't write that experience? So I think being a female writer, brings you to this impossible catch-22 and the relationship between motherhood and writing is just so fraught, multi-layered, and multifaceted in a way that I want to read as much as possible about. Also, I think that society tells women that mothering is the ultimate peak of their existence, that being a mother is the most important job you can have. I can think of speeches given by famous women who say, I might be the first woman of the United States, but my most important job is a mother. But we also know that mothers are banished to the peripheral of society. We don't give them health care, or in this country, we don't guarantee paid maternal leave. We tell them that they are not as important as their children. Their health and happiness is not as important as that of their children. So we're told as women that if we don't become mothers, we never reach our peak, but also our peak is still the bare minimum of society and not as important as the people around us. So of course this is all good fodder for some great writing. All right, that was a lot of uh, foreplay. Should we get into the list? Let's talk about some actual books and less about my thoughts. I've organized this list, which I hope is not too long, into books on being a mother, books on maybe not being a mother, and books on being a mother. For books on being a mother, I think the gold standard ah, on books on being a mother is A Life's Work by Rachel Cuss. This tells the story of her second daughter, pregnancy, newborn, infancy, while her firstborn daughter was a toddler. 
I think that as far as writing on motherhood goes, Rachel Cusk really, she cornered the market on that one. She's amazing. She talks a lot about how hard motherhood is in this book. She talks about motherhood as a never-ending conflict. To be with your newborn children is to not feel like fully human or yourself. To be in a room without your child, to go away from your children for a moment, feels to have left a part of your self behind and not to be fully whole. Her experience of mothering an infant as a constant experience of inner and outer conflict. She also discusses in this book how she feels her own personal existence and significance as a human plummet the moment she becomes a mother. You'll be shocked to hear that there was a lot of pretty sexist blowback to this book. In some ways I think that outline, the outline trilogy, is a response to this book and her experience of its reception. This is a memoir. She did a series of memoirs. This Aftermath, which is about her divorce, also has a lot of great writing on mothering. She is quoted in places saying that she wanted to experiment with writing without her self after the personal attacks that came from those memoirs and so outline as we know has this protagonist as such a minor character and the people around that protagonist as the main characters and their experiences as more important is why outline is such a groundbreaking form and I think is in ways a response to the centering of herself in these memoirs that received so much criticism. There's also a fantastic essay in Coventry, perhaps my favorite essay in the whole book, called Lions on Leashes, which I think is an amazing follow-up to a life's work. It talks about mothering teenagers and how you go through your entire experience of mothering with people saying like, oh wow, you're a mother, how amazing. And the second you have teenagers, they say like, oh, I'm so sorry for you, that's terrible. You wake up one day and your children are demons. And it's very good. To follow Cusk's journey from a mother of infants to a mother of teenagers was wonderful. The next book I wanna recommend on mothering is Department of Speculation by Jenny Offal. This is a novel and it tells the story of a marriage from the perspective of the wife. It is a cis hetero marriage in which they have a child and it explores again the idea of being a writer and being a mother, grappling with that existence at the same time. This book also, the first time I encountered the phrase art monster, the protagonist says you cannot be a mother and an art monster because an art monster only concerns themselves with their art and mothers have to be concerned with other beings. And so art monsters are not mothers or art monsters aren't women. And when I read this, I was like, I wanna be an art monster. This book also emotes fatigue. Protagonist's baby in this story is colicky and cries all the time. There's this amazing scene when, here, I'll read it. She says, and that phrase, sleeping like a baby, some blonde said it blithely on the subway the other day. I wanted to lie down next to her and scream for five hours in her ear. But the smell of her hair. That, she screams in my ear, don't talk to me about sleeping like a baby. She is a nightmare. And then the very next sentence is, but the smell of her hair. I think that whiplash is so well represented in this book, especially in that fragmentary prose that we know Jenny Apple is famous for. The next book I want to recommend on motherhood um, is also about that infancy and birth and pregnancy stage. It's called And Now We Have Everything on Motherhood Before I Was Ready by Megan O'Connell. This is a memoir, again, by a writer who got pregnant accidentally in her 20s and decided to keep it, her experience through pregnancy and birth. This book is harrowing, haunting. Often, motherhood is really romanticized. Lots of stories of beautiful births and babies. This book's whole sort of shtick was about taking that romanticization out of the childbirth process and it sure did that for me. I remember when this came out, I was reading it on my lunch break and I walked back into my office after my lunch break and the first person who saw me said like, are you okay? Are you all right? And I was like, breastfeeding sounds so painful. Do you know what happens to your nipples? It's not okay that that happens to a person's nipples. Yeah, so this book is like a BS detector for motherhood and childbirth. The next book I want to recommend on motherhood is one of my 
all-time faves, The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. This is an amazing book. This is a beautiful book. Again, if you're not interested in motherhood as a theme, I think you would still really enjoy these books. This one in particular, I think is just a must read. This is a memoir. Some people call this auto theory because it's a mix between autobiography and critical theory. I mean, she's just a smart lady, but she cites a lot of sources and thinks about her life through the lens of the reading that she does. This is an autobiography of the time in her life when she becomes pregnant at the same time that her non-binary partner, I think their name is Harry, begins taking testosterone shots. First of all, I think there are not enough stories and books out there that I have read that tell the story of mothering, whatever that means, from this non-binary, non-cis, non-hetero normative lens. I think the most interesting stories about motherhood talk about mothering outside of what we think of as like the nuclear family, whatever that means. This does that in such a beautiful way. This book I also remember just sort of blowing my mind as she is experiencing pregnancy and she's talking about like this is the weirdest sort of transformative queering of my body. I remember her talking about the fact that she gave birth to a boy and therefore grew male genitalia within her body and how this was such a mind fuck around queerness and the falsehood of gender and she counteracts this idea that motherhood being viewed as this ultimate act of conformity is just another way that society belittles things that are women's actions when in fact she argues that being pregnant giving birth is an incredibly radical act and that's a totally new perspective than what I've previously read. The title is a reference to the Argonauts who over time replaced every single piece of their ship, the Argo, thinking about family and love as the Argo in, in this metaphor, that it is constantly changing and becoming something new and you, therefore your love is existentially evolving thing, which I think is a beautiful metaphor for motherhood, but also partnership. This is a beautiful book, I highly recommend it. The next book I wanted to talk about on Mothering is Want by Lynn Steger Strong. I've been pushing this book pretty hard and nobody's read it yet or gotten back to me that they have. This is a story about, you guessed it, a writer, an academic who has two children with her husband. They live in Manhattan and they are going bankrupt. She has a PhD. She is a adjunct. This is a great book on the crisis of adjunctification in academia. There's another one like that that I'll talk about in a minute. They got pregnant by accident. She says, I knew we didn't have enough money to have her. We didn't even have enough money to have the abortion. We decided to keep her. I had to have an emergency C-section. My student health care in my PhD program didn't cover c-sections and that put us into debt and I stayed up all night breastfeeding her and I would snack on candy to stay awake then I had to have a root canal from all the cavities and now we are literally bankrupt this is a good one about the realities of the economic pressures of motherhood the protagonist says my body single-handedly bankrupt us and with minimal health brought into the world the two greatest pieces of our lives and how can both of those things be true this isn't an uplifting tale but it's a good one all right two more on mothering Quick ones, ready? Orange World by Karen Russell. This is a collection of short stories. There's a short story within Orange World that I believe was published in The New Yorker, but was, I'll link it below. The protagonist in this story is pregnant. She starts bleeding and she says, I would give anything to keep this baby alive. And then when the baby is born, this little demon comes to drink her milk. The, the idea being that like she sold her breast milk to the devil to keep her child alive and now she wakes up in the middle of the night and nobody else in her family knows or can relate and she crawls outside and breastfeeds this demon in the gutter. There's an amazing scene around the co-op of Portland moms who she meets up with and their experiences of mothering and how everyone is sort of hiding their own demons. It's dark, it's good. Last one, Golden State by Lydia Kiesling. This book tells the story of a protagonist who, you guessed it, works in academia. Sorry. She has a toddler named Honey. Isn't that cute? She has a little bit of a mental break and she sets out on the road. This is a take on the classic road story, that trope of like setting out on the road to seek freedom, to, to reach independence. And it butts up against that and asks, can you do that? Can you 
seek that independence if you are a mother of a toddler. Can you be a mother and have this classic road story? This book is all about anxiety and having that anxiety of new motherhood. At every moment, she's imagining ways that her child might accidentally die. All right, we got through the list of books on mothering. We did it. Good work, team. My other two lists are much shorter. I promise. I promise. I have three books on maybe not being a mother. First and foremost, the Coup de Gras Motherhood by Sheila Hetty. This book is a gem. I love this book. Oh, it was, it was a birthday gift. This book is a novel, although it purposefully is trying to confuse you on the line between auto theory and fiction. In it, our narrator is trying to decide if motherhood is right for her. There's an amazing form choice here around flipping a coin and asking those coins to dictate her fate. What I love about this book, and mothers out there might roll their eyes at me for this one, but stick with me. What I love about this book is that as I read it, it pushed me to think, is motherhood truly a dichotomy? Why do we try to pit mothers against women who are non-mothers, classify women as mothers or non-mothers, and is there a way to live in the in-between? What does motherhood really mean? You don't have to give birth to a child to be a mother, obviously. We can think of a million ways in which that is true, from adopted parents to families with multiple mothers to stepmothers. You don't have to be the one who raises a child to be a mother. So what even makes a mother? And if there are multiple definitions of mothering, then can people who choose not to have children be mothers? Can they be mothers through the care they give others? Can they be mothers through the care they give their loved ones, the love they and care they give the children of their loved ones, the love and care they give other people's children? Can there be space for someone, me? Me, me, can there be space for me? In between non-motherhood and motherhood. That is something that this book really opened that door for me. And uh, as someone who doesn't plan to have children or become a mother in the traditional sense of the word, can I find motherhood or semblances of motherhood or fragments of motherhood through other experiences. Another book on maybe not being a mother is The Life of the Mind by Christine Smallwood. This is the other adjunct academia book that I was talking about. I have mentioned this multiple times on my channel. I read this in March absolutely loved it. The book opens with the narrator in the sixth day of a miscarriage for an unplanned pregnancy. This book explores miscarriage in a way I haven't read about before, but also the idea of what mothering means before that fetus becomes a child. And even if that fetus never becomes a child, what mothering means in that case. Another ball of anxiety and I really love this one. The last book to recommend on maybe not being a mother is about maybe not being a mother anymore and that is Blue Nights by Joan Didion. I read this last month in April. I talked about it in my April wrap up but this book is a memoir of Joan Didion and her child Quintana Roo. How cute was Quintana Roo? Quintana died very young. And so this is Didion's memoir of grief and loss of not being a mother anymore, of losing your child. No one would claim that Didion was not a mother and yet she did not give birth to this child. She outlived this child. And so this is another experience of investigating what motherhood means. When you come into mothering in a different way, you outlive your child. What does that identity marker of mother mean at that point? Lastly, I want to recommend two fantastic books on being mothered. Both of these books were written by men and both of these books are written to their mothers, are products of incredibly complex, complicated mother-son relationships that I find to be really compelling and beautiful. The first one is Heavy, a memoir by Kesey Lehman. Kesey talks about the love he has for his mother, the fear he sometimes has of his mother, the amazing things he inherited from her, the tendencies to self-harm that he inherited from her. It is so raw and complex, their relationship, and the fact that not only that he wrote it, 
but the fact that he wrote it to her is just incredibly vulnerable and beautiful. The writing is really beautiful and really hard. This one stuck with me for a while. There's a lot about living in a black body, living in a fat body, the expectation of society on him. Again, another academic experience here, both he and his mother are academics and writers. Addiction plays a role in this story, specifically gambling addiction and that tendency towards self-destruction. This is a really beautiful book. I highly recommend. And my last recommendation on being mothered is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. I mentioned this before on this channel. This is also fiction, but also sort of reads as memoir or blurs that line. In this book, our narrator is writing to his mother. However, his mother cannot read what he is writing, uh, which takes that form and adds a whole other layer of complexity. And again, there's so much in that multi-layered relationship between love and fear and resentment and respect. I think in both of these books, Heavy and On Earth Were Briefly Gorgeous, the authors are so aware of and in awe of the sacrifices that their mothers made for them and are so beautifully able to hold that awareness and gratitude in one hand and conflicting feelings of anger or sadness in the other and put them both on the page at the same time and not let one outweigh the other one. And that's why those books are so beautiful and have so much depth. How many books was that? We did it. All right guys, that was a dozen books that consider the theme of motherhood in an interesting new way. If you made it this far, you must be really bored. I mean, there are so many books that could fit into this category. I'm curious to hear what other recommendations you have for me. Fiction, nonfiction, memoir. Please tell me down below what books you think tackle this theme. Books that are doing new, exciting things around the world's oldest theme. And thank you for watching. Happy Mother's Day, if that's something that you are celebrating. If that is something that is a thing in the country where you live, if that is something that is a thing in the family where you live, if that is something you're interested in, go call your mom, call your lady friend who is a mom figure, call that nice old lady who made you cookies when you were a kid, call your friends who are moms, they want you to call, call your friends who aren't moms, who don't have moms, who are trying to be moms, just call your friends, call somebody today and say you love them and you appreciate them. I love you and appreciate you! Thanks for watching, love you nerds, see you next time.